selection of sips and snacks is for you. Today, what to pair with peanut chicken zoodles. Hey there, I am Mealtime Mentor Jenny, and I'm here with Nick Calloway, who is the owner and head brewer of Anarchy Brewing based in Algoma, Wisconsin. And so today we are working through a series called Sips and Snacks, where we pair delicious food with even better craft beer. So we are going to be talking about a pairing for our peanut chicken zoodles. So these zoodles are pretty veggie heavy, lots of great vegetables. We've got bell pepper, carrots, um, red cabbage, and it's all kind of coated in this rich peanut sauce. So can you talk a little bit about what we're looking for in a beer when we're pairing it with a zoodle dish? Yeah, so like you said, the veggies are that light component, but really that uh, sauce really coats everything. It makes it a rich filling meal, which is great. Uh, we end up uh, thinking that the stout is gonna be the best pairing. And in particular, uh, something a little bit sweeter. Um, this one's gonna milk stout, um, just so rich. You want to match the weights of the food with the beer. And nothing makes a beer guy or beer girl's uh, job easier when doing pairings is if you have the ingredient in the beer and in the food. And in this case, we have PB Hobo, which is our peanut butter hobo. It's available in growlers, but it's also available uh, in bottles. And we have a little bit of peanut butter, literally in this beer. That sounds delicious. So you're gonna get that richness along with that slightly chocolate and roasty notes. And peanuts and peanuts. Nothing, a good pairing, yeah, right? Nothing can go wrong with that, so. You can smell the... Uh, you can smell the peanuts. Yep, you can definitely smell the peanuts. You get a little bit of that chocolate, almost uh, Reese's peanut butter cup feel. This is delicious. Thank you. And it's got that sweetness, it's got that, that coating, which is gonna be very similar to the, uh, the zoodles, but the carbonation is gonna really lift the zoodles up and kind of clean your palate, maybe reset again, so. Okay. Give it a try. Yeah. Grab some chicken. And just before you're done, we're gonna try the beer and see which gets elevated. In this case, it really should bring out that peanut in both of them. I can taste it. Mm -hmm. It How almost fun. brings out a little bit of chocolate in the beer too. Yeah. Well, that's super interesting. Thank you so much for sharing all of your knowledge with us today. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Make sure to check out the rest of our Sips and Snack series on our YouTube channel. And for more recipes, visit festfoods.com slash meals. All right, next on Local 5 Live, we go behind closed doors at the National Railroad Museum. Jordan is there for this new way to explore. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, Bob, we can meet in the corner over here. We have about two minutes. Yes. Yes. Um, we'll, we'll do the... the log first. Yep. So here's the stick. Here's the stick mic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three. Lav mic here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three.
Welcome back, everybody. Have you ever wondered what you're not seeing at the museum? The National Railroad Museum will show you with their brand new behind the scenes tours. And Jordan is there. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Do I have something for you? You know, when we went in this pandemic, you guys maybe uh, thought up a few more things for your home. But now these museums and businesses, while you were gone, are doing the same exact thing. And the National Railroad Museum has something new for you. Now, we have Bob here today. And, Bob, let's talk about this. This is a behind-the-scenes yes, tour, yes. something you don't mm -hmm. get to see normally. You know, when folks come to the National Railroad Museum, they look at the stars of the show, you know, the, the big boy, the Eisenhower, the, 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 the big trains, okay? Mm -hmm. That's maybe half a percent of our collection. Yeah. We hold over 100,000 other smaller objects plus archival material. And we want folks to come and see that and learn how it is that we do what we do before they see an exhibit out in the museum. Just amazing. Oh, yeah. they're incredible stuff. Huh? Trent, panned right over there once. I mean, this is just <laughs> about, let's say, not even a quarter of what we have uh, going over here. So what are some of the things that we're looking at? I mean, this well, is a documentation, right? Yep. That we're in our archive facility, and the aisle that we're looking at right now is mostly primary source documents, anything from manuals on how to operate and repair a locomotive to uh, f uh, freight car registries to passenger train schedules to documentation showing a survey for the original Transcontinental Railroad from the 1850s. That is amazing. Now, over <laughs> back behind you, you were kind of showing me some of this stuff. And well, this is where, you know, it gets this past my time, I you mean, know. I mean, <laughs> 16 millimeter film, that's, yeah, that's from my old school days. So there's actually some old Super 8 in there that some folks would probably remember. Um, you know, we, we probably got rid of our VHSs. Uh, long, I don't think I did. <laughs> <laughs> I still got to watch The Lion King. Uh, and, and you know what? There's, there's some beta tapes in there. Even oh, too. wow. So, you know, then we have a whole section that is um, documentation, paperwork, uh, promotional items, what we would call ephemera, really the, the history, the nuts and bolts of, of railroads and how they operated. Yeah. And something over here on this cart. This is what I think is really special because let's say you know somebody who has, or maybe you've even taken a, tri a railroad trip for yourself. This is one of those things yeah. from you know a trip back from, in the day. From the 1920s, of course. Today, you know, we take photographs, we go on the internet, and look for things. Back in the 1920s, you would have bought a book like this. This happens to be uh, from the Milwaukee Road Railroad that folks will recognize here in Wisconsin. And it is a trip from Lake Michigan out to the Puget Sound. But what's neat about this, all the images in here, and remember, color printing back then really didn't exist. Yeah. So all of these images were printed black and white and then hand colored by artists. Wow. And then glued into the book. There's the Wisconsin Dells from back then. And we can trace our whole trip out to <laughs> the Puget Sound. And this was, this was a souvenir. This was a cool thing that that you picked up either to plan your trip or to, to make a memory of it. Wow. That's how it used to be done. <laughs> well, it, it's incredible, and you guys, there's so much more to see here. So there's aisle after aisle after aisle, and we're going to take a look at some of the other cool things that they have here. These tours, if you want to uh, take, take one, it's, uh, information is on their website, and it's Wednesdays and Fridays. So why not this week, guys? Sounds like you can learn a lot. All right, thanks, Jordan. We'll be right back.